Previously, we talked about how trees are actually a subset of graphs. So the definition of a graph is actually more relaxed than a tree. There are no rules about root nodes and parent nodes like a tree. A graph is basically a set of nodes that are connected by edges. In a graph, we also call these nodes vertices. Formally or mathematically, we define a graph like this. G is the graph, V is the set of vertices, and E is the set of edges. Let's give a name to all the vertices and edges in this graph. You could think of V as a set of vertices that will define by V1, V2, etc. And for E, it is a set of edges we define by E1, E2, etc. Each edge can be thought of as a tuple of vertices like so. The tuple determines where the edge starts and ends, or which two vertices it connects to. There are two types of connection, a directed edge and an undirected edge, where directed means that we have to specify which way it points to. For example, in a tree, the parent can point to their children, but their children cannot point back up, hence those edges are directed. A directed edge has an origin and a destination, and is commonly shown as an arrowhead to point to the destination. We usually denote a directed edge with round brackets, V1 and V2, where it's an edge from V1 to V2. Since the order of the elements inside the brackets matter, V2, V1 would mean a different thing. It would mean V2 is pointing at V1. For undirected edges, we usually use curly brackets, which usually represents a set where the order doesn't matter. So if we go back to our graph, Based on the edges, we can say that this is an undirected graph since we use undirected edges. And this would be a directed graph or digraph for short. There's a reason why we use graphs to store data. It allows us to understand relationships between entities. For example, if you have a social network like Facebook, users are basically vertices and friendship connections between users are edges. Representing your data this way allows us to run algorithms that can answer questions like, how many degrees of separation are between Sarah and John? If Sarah wants to meet John, who are the people she should get introduced to before getting there? AKA, what is the shortest path from Sarah to John? Another question you can ask is, how many friends of friends does David have? Maybe David wants to make new friends and the easiest ones to make are friends of friends. For directed graphs, they're very useful to model hierarchy or constraints. For example, some university courses have prerequisites. You have to take certain courses before taking advanced courses. So sometimes they can get complicated. Modeling your data in a directed graph will allow you to run algorithms to figure out things like, is it possible to take this course? Maybe the people who designed the curriculum screwed something up and you can never get the right prerequisite for a course. Like if there is a dependency cycle. More on that in the future. Lastly, your graph can be weighted or unweighted. Weighted means edges have values in them. These are very useful for things like maps, where cities are vertices and edges represent the roads between the destinations. But the edges also contain distance to determine how long the road is. This is useful if the relationship between two vertices is not always uniform. In an unweighted graph, the relationships are uniform, meaning all of the edges have a weight of one. A weighted graph is useful to model distance between vertices and run algorithms to find the shortest path, where the shortest path does not necessarily mean visiting the least amount of nodes this time. You have to take the edge weight into account. So that was an overview of graphs and its mathematical definition. Next, we'll talk about different ways of representing graphs with code and the pros and cons of each method of representing a graph. All right, I'll see you in the next one.